Why does the transaction fee vary depending on the coin or the time of transaction? Let's find out. I'm Jessica Walker and welcome back to another Bitpanda Academy episode. Now, one of the biggest selling points for cryptocurrencies is the low transaction fees. Across some payment corridors in Africa, remittances for fiat currency transactions can cost as much as 20%. Well, this is where cryptocurrencies come in. Cross-border payments without the middleman. Although you do need to know about the cost of transaction fees and also how they're calculated in cryptocurrency transactions. So let's start by identifying what is a transaction fee and why do we need to pay them? Transaction fees are necessary in order to get a transaction included in the next block. And it's really important to note the actual fee you have to pay varies and depends on the network and also the cryptocurrency token. Did you know that actually Bitcoin transaction fees are fixed at a couple of cents regardless of the amount you send? So now you're starting to get the feeling of this, let's start with some of the basics. We know that Bitcoin Network is actually able to verify transactions without a single authority because of the miners who allocate their computing power to the network. Actually, one of the key reasons that miners continuously participate in a blockchain-based network is really because the block reward they receive for validating a block. Cryptocurrency mining can actually be extremely profitable business for cryptocurrency miners. In the case of Bitcoin transactions, the reward for miners consists of two things, all the transaction fees in the block that the miner validated and the additional incentive of a specific block reward for a newly minted coin in the process. For every 210,000 blocks that are mined, the reward for mining blocks falls by a half. And it takes roughly four years for 210,000 blocks to be mined. Consequently, Bitcoin halving usually occurs every four year interval. The next halving is predicted to take place in 2024. So how does the transaction actually get processed and also get confirmed? Well, as you already know, you don't physically own a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. Instead, the blockchain records ownership and distributes these ownerships to the whole network. So the actual amount of fees you pay really depends on the cryptocurrency and the network. Second layer solutions like Segregated Witness, or as we know, SegWit, or the Lightning Network, transactions can now be sent for as little as a couple of US dollar cents, regardless of the amount that you're sending. Now, this is a really important detail if you use Bitcoin as an alternative to traditional and established remittances services, some of which charge up to 10% per transactions. Well, I hope you found this video useful. Bitpanda will be releasing much more videos like this one and a whole section dedicated to personal finance. So if you do want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to the channel.